Hi right, guys, today I wanted to make a video on uh, rudimental drumming and specifically on French rudimental drumming and even more specifically on the Napoleonic call Les Rigodons which was the call for a direct hit on a target in target practice I'm assuming for artillery because otherwise it wouldn't be that interesting um, or for when men were sentenced to be chained to a ball and so it doesn't seem like that'd be a super important or often used call but it also lent its name to the rudiment, the French rudiment Le coup du rigodon, which is the equivalent of a drag tap or a single drag in French. And so they basically pulled this pattern from that call and then it became a rudiment. According to Wikipedia, Le rigodon is the cornerstone of rudimental drumming, whatever that means. So its importance practically, probably pretty low, but uh, sort of theoretically, um, pretty high. It's a Napoleonic call, which means it was probably written or generally mainly popularized from 1800 to 1815, which would have been the same time period as, say, Charles Stuart Ashworth was writing, or um, Samuel Potter in England. Similar time frame. I don't have any sources, actually, that are contemporaneous with that period. Because the first time I can see it in a book that I have access to is 55 years later. Um, and I've got four books that I'm going to look at and sort of compare and contrast a little bit. One, the first one, 1870, is Félix Carnot. Uh, the second one is 1889, H. Bruton. The third one, 1897, E. Revaillé. And the fourth one, 1946, jumping up into the 20th century here, Robert Tourte. So the difference is mainly the first two books, Carnot and Bruton, have uh, nine-stroke roles written. Rivaille and Tourte have 11 stroke rolls written. None of them are notated the way I think it actually ought to sound. Um, but they're notated probably three or four different ways, just to make it interesting. Uh, there are also manuals that I've seen that feature this from the 1800s by Duro and Pita, but I can't really read their notation, so I can't tell if it's the same as these or different, because it doesn't visually make sense to me. Haven't worked on French old school notation enough, I guess. Uh, so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to play some things. We're going to talk about why I don't think the things that are written are correct as far as how they're supposed to sound. And uh, we'll see if this makes any sense to anyone. Okay, so this first interpretation is going to be exactly as written from Carnot in 1870 with the nine stroke rolls. So the last one was kind of choppy, kind of bunched up. I don't think that's actually what they meant. Uh, I'm going to play it again, but in a way that I think it actually would have sounded based on my reading of how historical drumming was supposed to go, the ancient style. So you can see that version was a lot smoother than the previous version um, because basically in the ancient style the way that like the Codex and Klaus Hessler say that you're supposed to do it is um, the nine strokes are, are spread out to fill more of the space becoming more of like a five tuplet. The five strokes have like a triplet feel and the drag taps or the coup de rigodon have more of a triplet feel even though in this case they're written as a um, like dotted eighth sixteenth, they didn't really mean that, they meant triplets. So um, we're going to take a look at the 11 stroke roll version and then we'll uh, go from there. Okay, so this time I'm going to fast forward to 1946, play the Tourt version, which is going to be written in a totally different notation style, which is more correct looking, but still isn't going to sound the way I think it's supposed to sound. Notice it has the 11 strokes instead of the 9 strokes. So that's the, going to be the major difference. So obviously, no matter how I play it, you can see it's a combination of drag taps, five strokes, nine strokes, or eleven strokes, right? Depending on the version. And so when you're playing that, um, it sounds a lot like three camps. Because, of course, all these rudimental skills and all these military calls are in some way related to a common ancestor. And so that makes sense. Um, this particular piece 
The reason it's written so poorly compared to the way that I think it would be played, and the same goes for Three Camps and other American calls, is because rudimental drummers were entirely separate a lot of the time from orchestral percussionists. And even though classical notation was pretty good back then, um, rudimental percussion notation is universally terrible. It either uses completely non-standard notation, like most American publications up even into the 1870s, or it uses real notation but incorrectly applied, like they'll use 16th notes where they should have used triplets, etc. And this is just something that you have to get over, and it's confusing even to expert rudimental percussionists today. They'll look at a piece written, say, in the 1940s, like this tour, and they'll say, okay, well, this notation looks really good, therefore it must be correct, and I'm going to play it exactly as written. Not realizing that as soon as rudimental drumming gets into the picture, uh, you really, you play the rudiments in the order specified, you don't play the rhythms written on the page which is really mind-blowing and confusing and kind of crazy, but it's how it is. So if you've been watching my other videos uh, where I play like Wilcoxon and contrasting styles and stuff, it's the same kind of a deal, but then you can play a bunch of them in a number of ways, uh, just like this. You can play the rigadon um, smoothly, where it sounds like three camps, or you can play it as written, where it sounds kind of choppy and strange. So. Anyway, I hope this is interesting to you. Uh, Les Rigodons, uh, Napoleonic drum call from France. If you want to know more about old school rudiments, you can check out my Encyclopedia Rudimentia, which actually has not only old school rudiments, but goes all the way up into the largest collection of hybrids ever concocted, basically. Um, and also, I have a new book coming out soon, or maybe it will be out by the time this video plays, but Thrash Metal Drumming. Both of these are available on Hudson Music. So thanks for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you guys next time.